<laughs> they want to say it really fast, so it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. It's like welcome to the jungle. I need to point for something. Oh, dear. Você bota fogo mesmo. Well, he's a bit of a con artist. Yeah, they don't come inside the commercial. Oh, that's it. The last time you, you were here, I mean, actually the first time was for Rock in Rio. I mean, what, what were your first impressions of, of the country? I mean, how was that? Uh, well, my first impression of Rock in Rio was? No, was the, this. The, 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 the country, I mean, you know, right? This? <laughs> <laughs> it smelled really funny. Well, because of, uh, it was, what, it was a week long, right? Ten days long. Ten days Ten long, days and long. people weren't moving to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so we walked out on the stage, and it was like, but could you feel it from, from the stage? I mean, oh, yeah, it? man. It was intense. I've never really smelled anything like that before. Do you remember that night? I mean, who, who else played with, I mean, with you? Uh, Guns N' Roses, Billy Idol. So that was like... That's the, all I remember. I was the wildest night. Maybe the wildest night. How was the audience? It was huge, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the biggest show we've ever done. It was, really? It was scary. Yeah. I couldn't tell how many people were actually in the uh, <clears throat> audience. Did you have a full Until view? I watched Guns N' Roses. Did they lit up the crowd? Because uh -huh. I thought it was just people in front of me, but there were people here, here, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, are you fucking snapping up there? Wait, 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 wait up there. What did you think it was it before coming here? Uh, what did you know about? Well, movie? what a lot of people talk about in America is the Amazon, of course, sure. and how it's just getting destroyed and all that. So if that's you know, you think Brazil, you think I'm gonna come to Brazil and I'm gonna see trees getting knocked over and tractors and people getting pissed off. Mm -hmm. and, well, which really didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, at least, yeah. yeah. That's the way Brazil is portrayed in America. Mm -hmm. And and then you you got here and you saw all those things. I mean. Was it too different from the idea you had previously? Especially yeah, yeah. the the music scene. I mean, you didn't imagine you had so many fans here. Yeah. Talking about fans. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after that, how did you decide to come back here? How wh wh how did it happen? Well, we just we had a lot of uh, success in uh, at the Rock and Rio show, mm -hmm. and we heard that uh, our record was doing really well. Sure. Uh, we heard the Edge of the World was like really popular, and. Uh, we're, there was a bunch more offers, so we mm -hmm. said, yeah, let's come back to Brazil. Look into my eyes, I see it all. Well, we'd been touring off and on for two years, playing the same songs over and over and over. And how, how is it? Because this, you have to do these. Yeah. So how do you feel about it? Well, it's great when you can do it in a different country. Mm. But when you go home and you do that in front of your home fans, mm -hmm. it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> do you still keep that other band that you used to have before yeah. No More? Yeah. How do you deal with both things? Actually, you were doing that before you started with oh, yeah. No More. Since high school. And, and how did it happen by going to Faith No More? The guys saw you? Yeah, they saw me. Uh, or No, they just heard a tape, actually. Mm. They heard a tape and uh, called me up. And what kind of, of music were you playing when, in that tape? I mean, because I, Death I, I, metal. Death metal, which is a little bit different from Faith No More <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and do you, but I wouldn't, would you call this last album material death metal, too? For, for Faith No More? No, Mr. Bangalore. No, 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 no. It's a little different. It's more experimental. You, you, it's in like Shusha. <laughs> you were working with John Zorn in this. Yes. You know John Zorn? Yeah, he's a little bit known here. I mean, mm -hmm. And how did you get together? This was the first work you did together? Yeah, yeah. And how did it happen? Uh, we just met him, and uh, we were a big fan of his music. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he really liked Mr. Bungle, so we said, produce our album. And he said, OK. And what does he do in this album? Just producing? He just produces it, yeah. But he makes, uh, we got him because he, and Mr. Bungle, the, the sounds are very different. Like mm -hmm. each part is different, like a little section. 
Sure. And he just makes certain sections stick out and certain sections pull back. Mm -hmm. He's really good at making things ex sound extreme. And what the band faith and more things of Mr. Bango? I don't know. You better ask him. No, but I think, they, they, do they complain about it? Does it interfere with your work with the band? No, no, no. Every now and then. Mm. <laughs> You have some conflict, maybe. Nah, it's good. Do you do you tour? It's Mr. healthy. Do you tour, Mr. Mr. Bango? No, no, it's just a studio thing. Yeah. Oh, well, we haven't yet. Mm. We we may. Because with Faith No More right now, what what are, what are the plans? Writing new songs. Just the usual. And yeah, writing new songs. Uh, we're gonna record uh, next month probably. Already? New record, yeah. Uh, okay, well, actually, a bunch of new songs done already. The thing with, with the, the real thing, the, the album, is that it happened, it, it took such a long time to, to, to happen, isn't it? You, you, you said you were working on this album for two years, I mean, yeah. tours and all that. Would you feel like maybe it would be better if it happened just as once, like a one big thing, and then you, you were finished with that? Or how was this two years process? Well, it was weird because we kept, you, you, what you do is you record an album, and then there's this certain period of time where you have to support the album. Mm -hmm. And we would do it and we would think, okay, the album's dying, no one's buying it anymore. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, like we put a video out and people would start buying it. So we have to keep playing. And like, you have to start all over again and act okay. like, because the album's new to all these people that you're playing for. Okay. A video is not really, a, a video has a lot less to do with a band than you would think. Really? You know what I mean? Yeah, but uh, in, would you be more specific? I mean, you you wouldn't perform like that on stage, or like no. But in the context of a video, things happen that don't normally happen because there's cameras rolling. Like right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. you know yeah. what I mean? Uh -huh. It isn't real life. It's it's strange. Uh -huh. You sit there all day in a room like this with cameras on you, and uh, the music's playing, mm -hmm. and you have to, you know, like in the mirror when you were a kid, sure. and you have to dance around and act like you're. You're not singing or anything. It's like you're a, a monkey, a shaved monkey. And this, the first Makako. Time. So being an actor on stage, are you yourself when you're there? Or? I don't. It's hard to tell anymore. Mm -hmm. You just go on stage, and when you hear the music, this thing happens, and it's like, it's like a movie. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, you were looking, and then it's over. You were looking for a, a character, maybe, because from what I've, I've read about you, you're you're not like that in your personal life. I mean, you're not like this weird guy that goes and make faces for everybody. Are you like that? From what I've read, I mean, because you do you do like a funny character. Well, in real stage. in real life, in real life, yeah. This is what I am. Okay, actually, who's? Who's this girl, actually? You're trying to me. That's me. No. Policia. Policia. Mm. Aeronautica. <laughs> You're under arrest. Oh. <laughs> oh, no! Ah. It's like walking in the jungle. Oh, sampling it? Edis Lecieri. <laughs> Mi amore e esposa. <laughs> you better explain to people who Costosa. You never knew her, I mean, okay. <laughs> but I love her, I've fallen in love with her. Her voice. I mean, what, in the what, airport? What did you, at the airport? Like, yes. just saying things like flight numbers. Yes, because early in the morning, we get up at like 4.30 in the morning, we go to the airport, uh -huh. and uh, in the morning, we're all in bad moods. Sure. And we get to the airport, and uh, we, don't, we don't say anything to each other. We don't even want to look at each other. We're just mad the whole time. <laughs> and we get there, first thing you hear in the airport, Varik, flight. There's one. Yes. Ah. Uh, you see, it seems that you've seen a lot of animals in that Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. I mean, how was that trip on the boat? I mean, too weird. You took a boat, wasn't it? Yeah, to, yeah, to, we to, took a boat. It seems like you and the whole group like adventures. Yeah, yeah. We like to go out and like when we're when we're in a city mm -hmm. and see things and do things. The because weirdest. when you're on tour, uh, people really encourage you like. You have your management and, and the people that you tour with really, just the whole situation mm -hmm. encourages uh, like some kind of sheltering. I mean, you go yeah. into a hotel and uh, it kind of makes you think room service, uh, wake up calls, you know, you get into this whole framework of, of uh, like being in a cage sure. and it encourages you not to go out. So we like to, we like to go against that. But I mean, do you always look for a thrill or is that a part of... Yeah, it comes out of boredom, I think. I mean, when you're touring, uh, like I said, you know, yeah, but you're supposed to sleep and play yeah. and wait. And so 
we like to go against that. We like to go look for things, things to do. So I'm talking about this period before the band. You, you are, you are like a late comer for, for Faith No More. How much do you think that the sound of the band changed with you? Uh, I don't know. That's a tough one. It was strange for me. I mean, uh, the stuff that I was used to doing. I was used to singing really weird stuff. Mm -hmm. And this, to me, was a little more straightforward. So it was like discipline. I had to train myself. And if you finally like, made it, I mean, how, how, well, yeah, how strange do you feel singing those songs the first time? It was weird at first, but I was happy just to be in a band and to go on tour. I'd never been on tour before. Mm. So my attitude was uh, sit in my room for two weeks, write lyrics, and let's go on tour. You didn't really change the, 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 the sounds of, the, of Faith No More. I'm sure I did, yeah. But since the beginning? Uh, maybe, yeah. I mean, I, I think that, I mean, basically the main difference is the voice. I mean, people might say that the music is more commercial. I don't know. Maybe my voice is more commercial than the other guys. I don't know. When you take, you know, my voice and Mr. Bungle or whatever, mm -hmm. I do what has to be done to make the music stick out, mm -hmm. I think. That's what I try and do. But uh, with Faith No More, there's like a certain framework that I have okay. to fit my voice into, and, and that's what happens. And how did, did it happen? I mean, the, the band tried to teach you something, or...? Not you, really, no. You were trying to adapt yourself to the situation. Kinda. It was a little uncomfortable at first, and they just let me stay in my room. <laughs> and did they, did they make, like, changes on the lyrics you wrote the first time? Not really. We took out a fude here and there. Mm. <laughs> some, some fude here, some fude there. Fude, fude. Uh, yeah. Like, now we put those beeps, okay? Beep! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ota pra fude. Yeah. La policia vaya tomar no cu! If uh, you make a mental, uh, like a visual image, mm. that's the way I do it a lot with Faith No More and Mr. Bungle. I think, uh, okay, this song looks like uh, a big fat guy walking down the street, uh, drinking Guarana, uh, then he kicks a dog in the face, and uh, then he vomits onto an old lady laying on the sidewalk. I mean, you think of things like that, and then you write a song. In the songs in Mr. Bungle album, and also sometimes in, with Faith No More, it seems that both bands had a, a position that Yes, we hate any kind of dance music, which is totally infesting the charts now. That's not, that's not true. Ladies with an attitude, some things I think you have to like uh, for uh, wrong reasons. Mm. Like well, Vanilla Ice. Yeah. You don't like him because he's good, you like him because he's horrible. Okay, okay. you do just the opposite. Yes. I mean, it's a lot, it's yeah. hate and love. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Things like that. New kids, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, looking at a... Uh, it's like reading Opovo yeah. or Akia Gora. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a fascination. Like, it's like blood and guts, sangue. But the thing is, there seems to be a fight between dance and rock in the, in the charts right now. I'm trying to think of Billboard now, and you have... Okay, dance is it's like in fast in the charts, and rock is losing its space. I mean, I wouldn't say like... Okay, That's fine with me, man. I hope rock dies. Really? I don't, I'm not sticking up. I don't think anybody in Faith No More is sticking up for rock. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're about. So you, you go, you go, you go. To me, rock and roll is dead long ago. Yeah, I've never liked it. That's the thing. They're trying to say, no, rock is not dead, and let's promote it, and which is totally... No, it's bullshit. dead. Everyone, it's dead. Let it go. Fashion your self again. Oh, and if you learn about sex through magazines, mm -hmm. sex becomes very impersonal and uh, automated. Mm -hmm. if you, if you, what is the best way to learn about it? Well, uh, do it. Exactly. Experimenting. Finding other ways. How did you find out? Well, you were the interviewer here. But anyway. <laughs> uh, no, I want to know. Okay, it's off the camera then. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think but they want to know too. Well, they know already. I'll no, tell they the don't. Time. Yeah, one of the things if you I say I mentioned it. Come on, man. Dang it! I'm uh, here pouring out my soul, man. Listen, uh, for you to to to, <laughs> uh, to get in touch with a thing, it came late for you, maybe. Timido? No, me? <laughs> Not really? Are you? <laughs> Is it trying to? Él es timido. He's trying to get out of the subject. <laughs> That's the whole thing. 
when no you fala uh, the sex so yeah i just ask about sex that's it <laughs> somebody put me to the Talking about open mind, you've been here in a kind of different shows. I mean, you you've been to places where you you would see live nude shows. And yeah, you have to see places like that. You sure. have to go to favelas, and then you have to see uh, a nice restaurant or mm -hmm. cocavado or something like sure. this. But specifically about these shows, we, I mean, you would never th see a show like this in, in the US, United States, maybe, would you? Uh, uh, the, it's it's more of an act. It's uh. It's forbidden in America mm -hmm. to show mm -hmm. penetration. Oh, and no? uh -huh. so it's an act. They act. They don't really do it here. It's sexo explicito. Exactly. I mean, and do you think that this have this have has a kind of uh, influence on the way people behave here? I don't know how much. I you think know. Uh, well, sex in America, uh, we are very uh, repressed. Still. Still, yes, yes. Even people are very afraid of sex. Mm -hmm. Very afraid. If you were talking about sex with friends, this same situation uh, would happen? Well, there's a period of time where uh, you just start talking about it. And for mm -hmm. me, uh, when I was really young, uh, I used to masturbate in front of everyone, because I didn't know. My parents didn't tell me it was a bad thing. But, and how was the reaction, if you can remember that? Well, uh, say, just don't do it. It was like I think my parents kind of got a kick out of it. I think it was like <laughs> entertainment for them. <laughs> we would have friends over. Uh, like my parents would have friends over and uh that might come into your number right? well kind of yeah it's like uh you know how they say oh play the piano for everybody yeah, yeah. my parents would say come on mike show them your dick <laughs> and you would just mike go, mike uh uh tocar la pinto okay and then you very spontaneously you would just sure just yeah because i didn't know it was a private thing there's a day where you realize mm -hmm. this is uh, something i shouldn't be doing in front of people anymore and uh, so you, I just went into my room and I do it in my room instead. But I would still tell everyone. But this was like a. Say, um, okay, I'm going to masturbate. I'll be back in a few minutes. See you in a while. <laughs> See you in uh, 30 seconds. Did it happen really late for you? Was like, or no? Sex? Yeah. Uh, with other people? Yeah. Uh, 19, I think. And this, like, because you have all the, your circle of relations, they say, oh, you haven't done it yet? Yeah, so. Come. No, I thought sex was stupid. Really? I, uh, um, I was very straight. Uh, I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. Uh, uh, I got great grades. Mm -hmm. I really studied a lot. I was really uh, focused and, 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 well, let's just say dumb. When and uh, I vowed uh, to myself, I said I don't, I don't want to drink, mm -hmm. and I don't want to uh, have sex because uh, I equated that with drinking and being drunk and being... Stupid. Mm, but so I thought sex was dumb. Do, do, do you think you slobbering and talking baby talk and mm, do you think you used to be like that because of your family? What made you behave like that? Uh, probably no. I, I think it was more so my friends. Mm. I had about uh, three or four or five friends mm. that I was really close with, and everyone else I hated. <laughs> and they, they they had the same thoughts. Oh, we all, yeah, 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 exactly. So it was like a. Like a pact. I see. And, but, but it was like Lord of the Flies. Did you read that book? Yes. Uh, it's, it's like that. Because each one of us started dropping off and oh, okay. one by one. Did you, have rather, did you rather book before yeah. being in those groups? Or it was like an influence? It was, yeah. Well, not really. No, it was just not. a reference, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you are now, uh, like, you're in the business now. So people are expecting you to be, to behave like the rock stars they know. I mean, like an asshole, yeah. <laughs> like like an asshole, maybe. But yeah, I mean, today don't don't do they get disappointed when they know that you would not really like that? Uh, I I don't know. I think a lot of people expect yeah, expect you to come out and be uh, ham. Sure. You know, like make, uh, make faces and mm -hmm. things like that, and mm -hmm. that's great and everything, but uh. You can only do that for so long. Do you, do you think? How do you see yourself or the band in the in the music scene? Because since you're not, you don't have the same attitude that the whole rock, the, the majority of rock bands have. Uh, I mean, you are a little bit different, so you don't, you never want to be like a big band like those assholes. No, I think maybe? it's great, but I just, uh, I don't like. It's for most bands, I think it's like a package. Mm. They, uh, 
they become big and a lot of people start liking them. They think they have to behave a certain way. They think they have to take sure. the drugs and you know, play the whole game. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, I'm not very good at it. But that's all I can say. I haven't figured it out yet. My hair does not stand up very well. Uh, I don't look that good with makeup on. Uh, I can't, I can't, I don't have, I can't move like, like that, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, these people do that just because of, just because of their major. I mean, this no, it's a formula. It's uh, if uh, like say Guns N' Roses, they're really big. Mm -hmm. A lot of bands, especially American bands, mm -hmm. um, hear Guns N' Roses. The, it's it's association. They think uh, if we sound like that and we look like that, we're going to be big too. And uh, so a lot of bands try and do that. I think I think we're more nice. Uh, guys, I don't think we're like bad guys like Guns N' Roses, like throwing beer bottles and stuff. I think we're more like Aha mm. or or New Kids. I think we're very straight ahead. I think it's very normal, don't you think? Uh, you don't you don't regret being too famous now or as famous famous enough to be bothered to people. Do you regret what happened to the band now? No. You know, but you never. On the other hand, you never thought about being as a star as, as big as you you are now. No. Well, it, you guys don't really know the whole spectrum here in Brazil. I must say, so we're, what is it? we're not this big everywhere else. <laughs> but but I mean, no one really likes us this much. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's true. I'm telling you. <laughs> but I mean, you are more. I mean, you might not be Guns N' Roses, but I mean, you're not like a totally unknown band even in, in the United States. Not totally unknown, but we. Uh, it's not like this. Yo, oi, oi, Benito, oi, Benito. you're not that big, how much bigger are you bigger? How good is that? Well, I think uh, American people uh, are used to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. In America, there's lots of TV, lots of media, millions of bands, mm -hmm. uh, and they're used to uh, getting hit in the face with uh, all this stuff. And so they come very cold and very skeptical when mm -hmm. they look at things like this. And uh, you have to really pound them in the head. Mm -hmm. You have to get underneath the skin yeah. and, uh, in order to affect them. And that's what we had to do. We did a million tours in America. We toured for like two years, like I said, on one record. And we started off like playing bowling alleys and mm -hmm. pizza parlors and places like that. And uh, it just takes a long time. You have to really beat yourself over the head. But it, you have to just be real persistent and be really obnoxious. Would you say that maybe European audience they are more open to bands like you? Because it toured that there too. Yeah, and the that's where we broke first, like Europe and, and exactly and England, especially. Exactly, especially like British people. Are they more open to I new think. bands, new acts? I think maybe, yeah. But it was the same there, to tell you the truth. I mean, we we uh, you know played really small places, and mm -hmm. you have to keep coming back because you build up to a certain level, and then you leave. Sure. And if you stay away too long, people forget. That's right. So you have to keep, keep coming back and stay in their face and stay in their face. Like, you have to be a real pest. How, how many times? You have to be like a m mosquito. <laughs> Come on. And then people, uh, they have to pay, when a mosquito's flying around you for uh, a long period of time, you have to pay attention to it. Sure. That's our philosophy. <laughs> Than they are. 